welcome to Is It Worth It in 2023 and today we're going to be checking out a game that I play religiously every couple of years for a good old palate cleanse and that is none other than Alien Isolation. Alright so if you don't know anything about the Alien movies or the games whatsoever that is a damn shame but don't stress I've got you covered. So the game is set in 2137, 15 years after the events of the original Alien film. Now you don't have to have any previous knowledge or seen the films. Um, but I would highly recommend giving them a spin because, yeah, they're fantastic. All right, so you play as Amanda Ripley and she is the daughter of Ellen Ripley, who's currently MIA in space, and her daughter Amanda, who we're now going to call Baby Ripley, just to make it easy, is investigating the disappearance of her mother. All right, so Baby Ripley, she arrives on Sevastopol, which is a remote station, space station owned by the Seijin Corporation. The station is in disarray with the signs of a struggle and a malfunctioning AI named ChatGPT, I mean Apollo. So the game relies more on stealth, survival and evasion rather than actual hand-to-hand -hand combat. The main threat is not the remaining survivors or the very, very friendly Happy Joes. It's absolutely the magnificent beast, the Xenomorph. It's a highly intelligent and deadly creature that hunts you throughout the game and studies how you play so you never know what to expect. Alright, so players must scavenge for resources they need to craft items including meds, flares, lethals and non-lethal weapons and solve mini-games in the form of hacking uh, to progress further whilst avoiding all hostiles, humans, androids and the alien of course. So as you explore Sevestival's vast interconnected environments including various sections of medical facilities, engineering decks, maintenance areas, you must do so whilst the hungry face eater is hot on your tail as you discover the dark secrets of Sevestopol. Alright, so as the game progresses, the Xenomorph becomes a more present threat reacting to noise and movement more often and with greater accuracy. Baby Ripley must use hiding spots, distractions and environmental cues to stay undetected and avoid being killed. Besides the deadly space chicken, Baby Ripley faces hostile humans who have formed factions and become desperate to survive, as you do. And additionally, she encounters working Joe androids, some malfunctioning and hostile, while others are helpful. You can also find and use various items including a motion tracker, a flamethrower, and your run-of-the-mill weapons like handguns and pipe bombs, but they're goddamn loud, so you just know who will be waiting in the next air vent drooling for your flesh. Crafting is essential for creating items such as med kits, EMP devices, and distractions so they will make your life slightly easier. Um, the story unfolds through cutscenes, audio logs and interactions with other characters, gradually revealing the fate of Ellen Ripley and the true nature of the Siege and Corporation's activities. Baby Ripley's investigation leads to the final effort to escape the Sephestipal Station. Alright, so now you get the gist of what's going on, let's dive right in. I still can't believe it, but Isolation came out in 2014, that's nearly 10 years ago, and there are only a few small giveaways that I'll go over later in the video. Now the game does have a few rough edges but there's some really simple mods um, that can help with that. I also run a reshade just to clean it up, get rid of the blur, the clutter, make it a bit more vibrant because I'm a sucker for nice colours and if I'm going to get skewered by an intergalactic beast I want to look good whilst I'm getting killed. Alright so visually straight out of the box without any mods, without any reshades, Alien is still pretty stunning especially since I said before it's clocking 10 years. The first time you step on Sevestical Station the amount of detail you can see is amazing. But the lighting lighting following you down the hallway, the smoke running down the walls, it just that feeling of immersion is just running thick. And the guys at Creative Assembly have kept it so close to the original series, it's fantastic. Keep in mind as well that this was their first try at a, like an FPS horror style game. They're known for their strategy like Total War games and yeah they've done an amazing job. They did however have a little help being able to see and use all the original source material from the concept art, original sounds of the alien, props and all the things, the little things like the balance bird, the old VHS style and that iconic siren um, and it's constant throughout the whole game. In saying all of that, the only thing that really lets it down or like shows its age is the character animations and models. They're super janky, they're basic, the lip sync is so out of touch. You can tell they didn't spend much time on it um, or have the resources. They wanted to spend it all in the detailed atmospheric world and on the alien itself. And yeah, that makes up for it 100%. They fucking nailed it. And Alien Isolation isn't a fast paced like FPS where you're constantly brawling. So if that's what you're looking for, then you're in the wrong place. It's a survival stealth where it's more about thinking of ways to move around the world, uh, take different paths, be undetected, not just killing everyone you see. I mean, you can do that if you want, but uh, yeah, it'll make, it, make your time hard. Uh, the way to where they achieve this 
deep connection with baby Ripley, the ship and all the constant threats, um, especially the beautiful Apex Predator, is through their sound design. Like I said before, they had access to all the original sound of the alien, um, the ship noises, all the good stuff and they've used it so well. Like if you're exploring or crawling through events, sneaking past some trigger happy survivors um, and you hear this like hissing noise or some noises, quite could possibly be the alien, you don't know. It's just integrated so well um, and you don't have a clue and it just adds that so much more pressure and suspense to even the basic tasks. So if you're cutting down a door, hacking into somewhere or changing the power or the, the airflow in a different section or even saving the game and you hear this little noise or the music amp up, you're like, what the fuck is that? And yeah, it just makes basic tasks way more intense and yeah, just immerses you a lot more into the game. All right, Baby Ripley is actually an engineer and they show this off by how smooth the tools and equipment feel in her hands. But then when it comes to handling weapons, not so much. She's not a trained soldier. Um, and they've purposely like added a little slight tremor in her hands for that little bit of authenticity. And yeah, it makes you feel like, oh, she's dead scared. Speaking of being scared, the beautiful alien is not the only threat that you'll face. There are pods of survivors that are friendly or hostile and you won't know until they either try and reason with you, blast you in the face. Um, they usually give you a bit of a warning shot if they are hostile. And it is possible to go through the whole story without hurting a single human um, because choices do have some kind of consequence throughout the game, whether it being different opportunities and routes and ways to maneuver around the station. Uh, but there's also the not so friendly working Joes that they're on a slow decline and their reliability is not that great. They can become hostile at any stage, but you do however need their help throughout the game. Um, they tend to put up with your presence and they really don't like when you're not compliant with them. And they'll just turn hostile and this just leaves that real uneasy feeling and they're super strong they will crush your skull if they get the chance they are however pretty slow and cumbersome but given the chance with their unnatural strength they will just grab you and beat you there's heaps and heaps and heaps of them across the serviceable station they are killable but especially in later difficulties it's a waste of the resources um, because yeah, it takes so much time and effort to kill them so speaking of difficulties, the game offers a range of different ones, but they recommend playing on hard. That is what they kind of deem like a good and challenging experience. There's heaps of tools, scanners, gas axe, your trusty wrench, and certain weapons to be unlocked as you traverse the station. It is pretty linear, but it does give you the chance to come back and unlock doors and things that you previously haven't had access to and lets you explore quite well. It however does halt your progress a little bit if you don't have the right equipment needed. You've just got to go pretty much back and find uh, what, you, what you're missing. You can't pick up survivors weapons so you have to spend a bit of time scavenging for materials. You have to craft various items from med packs, non-lethals. The game holds your hand a bit for like the first hour or so and just kind of but then it kind of just lets you go, go off on your own with the slippery gypsy he's watching your every move it's so unscripted and dynamic that you don't know what to expect and it's truly a masterpiece the crafting however it does feel pretty basic it's all like blueprint driven so you need to find them as you go you don't have a massive inventory so you pretty much fall most of the time on like the normalish to hard difficulties but on nightmare mode i think it's called however it's complete opposite you really have to dig deep search all the nooks and crannies for all the right resources to shoot to make the consumables and it really impacts your choices um, because yeah some you sometimes you won't have enough stuff to throw a flare to make a med pack so yeah it makes it that a little bit harder and a little bit more immersive it gets rid of the hud the ai of the alien is a lot more accurate i suppose and it like it's a lot more difficult to deal with because it can predict um a lot more it learns a lot quicker where you're going to hide and it will see you slightly easier so that place that you hid before under a table in a locker if it kind of gets a glimpse of you a bit earlier it'll know and you're you're dead um and everyone's playthrough as well is is unique the main story is fairly rich and eventful but it does have periods where it feels like there's not a lot happening and the pacing is a bit slow towards the end uh it really feels as if it just won't end but it does keep you guess guessing um and we'll, I'll, I'll definitely give it that some of the character dialogue as well is pretty flat when you come across it it's not much of it but yeah when you come across it it's not really too much going on and it ends very quickly but the actual atmosphere and gameplay it more than makes up for it there is dlc that brings other characters back into the world uh with last survivor where you get to play as ellen ripley 
actually on board the Nostromo, which is awesome. And it adds challenge maps, there's also crew expander where you can play a mixture of different characters. Um, but with all that, is Alien Isolation worth playing in 2023? Absolutely, it's an actual banger of a game. Um, well worth your time, well worth your money, and if you're a tight fisted git, it's always on sale. GOG, Steam, Epic, wherever you get your games from, you usually pick it up pretty cheap because yeah, it is getting pretty old. Um, that is it from me guys. If you like this content, uh, you wanna see more, please smash that subscribe button, hit that bell, um, and we'll see you in the next one. Pixel Forge signing off.